I'm Valentina Carbone, Professor of Supply Chain Management at ESCP Europe, where I also teach in the Executive MBA. Today, I would like to talk about the link between forecast and supply chain and to challenge common beliefs and behaviors in the field of forecasting. Forecasts can be considered as wants for companies as they allow to predict customer demand when instantaneous production is not possible and to shape and scale resources. Why are forecasts also very important for supply chain managers? As reliable and accurate forecasts can contribute to achieve maybe the most challenging objective that is matching demand and supply. Why is it so difficult to match demand and supply? In a short answer, I would say that demand varies in a more or less predictable manner while supply is inflexible. Although organizations may have the right amount of resources, people, product and equipment on average, they may still face situations where these resources are not available in the right place, in the right moment, in the right quantity. So forecasts are all the most important to try to achieve this equilibrium between demand and supply. Because in case of over forecast, companies will experience excess of inventory cost, excess of capacity cost, and in the long run, even important markdowns. In case of under forecast, on the contrary, there will be dissatisfied customers to manage and lost sales opportunities. So, how often and to what extent are forecasts wrong? One of the most comprehensive studies carried out by Terra Technologies in 2010 on forecasting revealed that for the nine leading consumer goods companies in the world, on weekly forecasts, the error is around 50%. It means that there are discrepancies around that figures between forecasts and real data. This is clear that common practices and belief on forecasts need to be reassessed. I would like to do that talking about methodological and behavioral issues. Let's start with methodological ones. The first common belief I would like to challenge is to think that the map is the territory. With that, I refer to the over-reliance on historical data-based methodologies in forecasting. I would suggest that every forecaster should read the best-selling book written by Nicolas Nassim Taleb, an epistemologist and a trader, was titled He is the Black Swan. This book deals with our blindness to randomness and to huge unexpected events. Think about all the disruptions occurred recently in global supply chains due to natural or man-made disasters. The second methodological base I would like to talk about is the fact that very often past sales are unique predictors for demand. Actually, forecasts assume seasonal patterns, although demand is not only and not always seasonal. Many demand signals are ignored, changing customer expectations, volatility, promotions, weather forecast, other stock keeping units, behaviors, and so on. Recently, Procter & Gamble has adopted a comprehensive method to include these other predictors for demand, and the results are amazing. They reduced by 40% their forecasting errors and by 30% their safety stock. Now let's move on to behavioral issues, and let's talk about islands of analysis. Let's start with internal islands of analysis. The generalized idea is that forecasts are always wrong, especially those made by others. So the results will be an increasing number of different forecasts within the same organization. This in turn will lead to conflicting plans, excess of safety stock, lack of credibility and lack of responsibility for forecasts. The external islands of analysis refer to the hesitant and tentative initiatives in the field of collaborative forecasting between the different actors along the supply chain. Why shouldn't these actors collaborate more between them to share and produce a unique supply chain forecast, as today competition is between supply chains more than between companies? I would like to conclude with a suggestion mixing together methodological and behavioral issues. If we presume that black swans are by far more, more dangerous than suppliers, customers and even other competitors, then let's increase the quality and the quantity of collaborative initiatives in the field of forecasting.